great pleasure to be talking to Jordan Moreau. Jordan is the global lead for data literacy at Click. We are here in London at Click's Data Revolution Tour. Um, and we have also make, made, made it especially authentic yeah. with the, the, the Westminster Abbey bells in the background. Uh, the Abbey is celebrating the 750th anniversary today. We've just had the Queen visiting, so the bells will go on, which yeah. makes it especially authentic, Absolutely. I guess. Yeah. Um, so you told me that people sometimes talk, refer to you as the chief nerd officer. Absolutely. What, 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 what does that mean? What do oh. you do for Click? So my, my entire role is, it's very interesting. Like Click as a vendor is all about BI analytics, data integration. I'm product agnostic. I don't do anything with the product. Mm -hmm. My entire role, I, I've joked for years that it, I'm a nerd and I'm trying to make everybody else nerds. <laughs> and so over time, because people know the joke and all that, they just started to call me chief nerd officer, mm -hmm. which if you think about data literacy, it's the empowerment of people, yeah. the empowerment of organizations, the culture and people to actually use data effectively. Mm. It's not about tools, it's about the human element of it, and that's my world, is, is helping organizations realize that potential and that power through the human side of it. Very good, so I, like you, I believe that data literacy is one of the most important skills mm. that organizations will be looking for in the future, yeah. that if you want to become successful in your career, this is something you need to embrace. Yep. Um, what are some of the the, the key tips that you would give organizations if they wanted to boost the data skills in their organization? Yeah, I, I think the first thing to realize is that the empowerment of individuals does not mean make everybody a data scientist. You know, I'm very fond of saying not everyone needs to be a data Completely scientist, agree, yeah. but they need to be data literate. Yeah. And the definition of data literacy is the ability to read, work with, analyze, and argue or communicate with data. Yeah. And if you think of those four skills, what we want to do is boost people's ability to move through the world of analytics, to find insight, and work together as a culture to find insight and move the needle. Use that insight to drive a decision. So when I work with organizations to help them, I, I tell them focus on empowering individuals and the culture to be more comfortable with data. Mm. I never use the word change culture, even though that's almost what you're doing, but yeah. let's, let's weave the DNA of data into what you already do. And so I tell some, yeah, you do need data scientists in this area, and you need data analysts here and business analysts over here. But to help organizations do that, key characteristics like data fluency, can you speak the language of data? Mm -hmm. I believe in data visualization being powerful because it simplifies data. Mm -hmm. What kind of learning culture do you have? Because if you don't have a background in data and analytics, you have to learn somewhere. What kind of learning do you have in place? Those are key tricks that don't change the culture, but they help evolve it naturally mm -hmm. so that everybody understands that data is a good thing to be doing, not just some nice to have anymore. So boosting your, your data skills yeah. then, um, some organizations do this very well. Yep. They have a, a data culture, yep. people use data, they have the right tools in place, and, and some of, most of them are not very good at this. Yeah. Um, what do you see makes the difference between those that, that really get an understanding of, of data, have an edge on, on, on yeah. how they use data compared to the ones that are, are maybe That's struggling with that? Excellent question. I think one of the keys to it all is the organizations that have strong data and analytical strategies that can be then tied back to the company's goals. I think what I see is one of the biggest trends around the world is most organizations do not have that. They have ideas around investing in a lot of data, and a lot of them think more data the better, which isn't always the case, right? So I find that organizations that say, this is our data and analytics strategy, this is how it ties to our company's goals, it's much better for the outcome-based approach, right? So many people say, buy tools here and there, they invest in all these tools that are supposed to solve it. Mm -hmm. I think for years, vendors have purported that their tool will be the magic potion that solves everything. Mm -hmm. And then when it doesn't, guess what gets blamed? The tool. Mm -hmm. Reality, the tool was probably fine. It was the human element that wasn't. Mm -hmm. And so those that don't succeed, they're just throwing money at tools, at data, sourcing it, forgetting the human aspect. Mm -hmm. Those that are succeeding have these strong data and analytical strategies that can be tied back to company goals mm. because then people know why they're using it. They, they can see the context, they can see the outcome in the end. 
without that outcome in the end, that's when you have to be like, why are you doing this? In fact, prime example, I was meeting with a US federal agency and they were telling me about these different projects. They had not only Click, my company, they had Tableau and I think Power BI, the big three, right? <laughs> and I said, okay, can the people working on those projects tie it back to your organization's goals? The audience just kind of laughed and was like, yeah, no, we can't. Mm. I said, then you're wasting your time. Why do those things if you don't know what the purpose is? Yeah. And I think that's how that culture succeeds. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. I, I, I think for me, your data strategy has to be the same as your business strategy. Yes. It has to start with your business goals. The data then has to be an enabler for your business. Yep. Um, and then we need to bring people on board as well. So I, I think the starting point has to be your strategy, 100% yeah. agree. One challenge that I see in organizations is their existing strategy is not right for this yeah. new fourth industrial revolution. So even if they start with their strategy, yep. it probably wouldn't get them to yeah, a great it's place. Not move the needle. So they need to make sure their strategy is right, and then they they need to make sure that they use the data to actually yeah. deliver some of the biggest business challenges they Absolutely. have and address those. I was with an organization recently who, instead of calling it a data strategy, they called it a wisdom strategy. <laughs> Interesting. And I thought that was a brilliant way to describe it because when, when you look at it from your business strategy, yeah. your data strategy, you're all trying to make better decisions with the information. I love that. And to share exactly. which organization that was? Uh, the United Nations. Oh, In fact, okay. you can watch the recording of it. So. Excellent, yeah. Um, and they said it's not just the data side of it, because if you just focus on data, yes, we can govern data and collect it all day long. Mm. But if you don't know why, it's not going to work. And then if you have a business strategy, mm. but don't tie it to data, and then you leave out the human side, mm. Where's the wisdom in all of that? And so they said, we want a wisdom strategy. And I thought, that's pretty spot no, on. I, that nails it right I there. actually like that. That's yeah. good. Yeah. So coming to the personal human side, mm -hmm. um, a big challenge around culture, around people being scared about numbers yeah. and data. What are some of the, the things that organizations can do to mm -hmm. overcome this and actually boost the late data literacy yeah. in organizations? I think to do it, organizations need to set a tone. And the first thing is to let them know, we're not talking statistics. We're not talking the, normally when people think data and analytics, they get intimidated because they're used to thinking, oh, we're doing advanced statistics. We, yeah. we have to learn to code. Yeah. Let's let the culture and the organization empower people to know you're already good with data, you just don't realize it. How many of us like sports? Mm. There's data everywhere with mm -hmm. sports. We use our weather apps all the time. Weather has very advanced algorithms and things to make the simple app that you use on your phone. Mm. If you're buying a home, if you're filling a car with petrol and all that, mm. that is all data literacy. Mm. So I think organizations, first off, need to let people, one, understand they're already there. Mm. I think the other side to do it is organizations to really boost and help people overcome that fear is get some success stories. Mm. Bring the context to it, right? Mm. Get your evangelists that are already using data and they're seeing experience with it. Create these stories. Mm. Create these opportunities for them to share, to ask questions, to see the outcome-based approach. And then the third, truly invest in smart learning around it, mm. right? I think for far too long, how many people like to get an email that says you have mandatory training? <laughs> No one really does, mm. right? What they want is to know that what they're doing matters. And so whenever I'm working with organizations, I tell them, start with the why. Teach them the why behind all of this. Mm. Then the how and the what can follow suit. But if they don't know why they're doing this, they're just going to put it off because their jobs are already busy. Mm. And I'm sh I don't know if you've ever asked this. I'd love to ask the question, how many of you don't have a busy job? <laughs> I say, don't raise your hands because if your boss is in the room, you could get in trouble. Mm. Um, but everybody has a busy yeah. job. So teach them that this is about empowerment, not just mandatory Absolutely. learning. And I, I, I was actually teaching a, a, a data literacy course the other day, and I had five people from the same organization and I asked them why you're here and so my boss sent us here because we need to boost our data literacy yeah. system. And af after, after the course they came up to me and said this was really interesting. Exactly. I didn't expect that. Yeah. And actually this is what we, we need to package all of this well. Exactly. The, mm. That communication from their leaders to them should have been let's talk to you about why this matters mm. not you have a course you have to go take. Mm. Because as soon as people, that's what I love actually about the topic of data literacy is you're bringing com what could be seen as boring and complex or intimidating, you're bringing it to fun. Mm. And you're teaching them, don't worry about the boring side of it, let's talk about this. And I, I have the same experience. As mm. soon as you're done, people are like, well, that makes sense, let's do mm. this, versus that drudging feeling of, oh, I have to go do this again. Mm. 
Yeah, and I, I, uh, we were talking about this earlier that actually empowering people, giving them some of the skills around data helps them because they are intimidated sometimes, yeah. they're scared. Giving them the confidence to use data helps them. Yeah, and absolutely. Yeah. And it, it's not just, if you think about all the news about data privacy and data ethics and you know how do you regulate this and all of that, well look, if you make everybody data literate, it's not just going to help on an organizational mm -hmm. enterprise level. Think about what it does for your life. Absolutely. Decision making just gets boosted so much when you can support what mm -hmm. you're doing with data. And it's just really funny. Even, you know, a funny anecdote is uh, we were remodeling our home and they tried to sell us on a dishwasher that connects to the internet just because it connects to it and I had to ask why. You know, some people are like, oh, it connects, you know, but when you're data literate, you can be like, what's the purpose of this? I, I don't see it. Yeah. And I think people don't realize that this isn't just a career thing. The way the world is shifting, this fourth industrial revolution, digital revolution, it's a life altering thing. Yeah. And the way jobs are changing, you need these fundamental skills. Completely agree. So if you left people with your key bits of wisdom mm -hmm. saying these are the key things that I would like you to take away to boost data literacy mm -hmm. in your organization what would what would those things be I, I, I've coined it and call it the three C's of data literacy because I do get asked you know do I have to go back and learn statistics do I have to do it don't start there mm. that would be the first takeaway don't start by going back to school for statistics start with these three things start with the first C is curiosity mm ask questions that. of everything yeah. because for far too often as adults when you enter your job you just take things at face value this mm. is my role this is what I'm supposed to do mm. prime example for me is I, I had a role in the past where it was like a 78 page PowerPoint that was connected to charts in Excel I eventually broke it down when I was like why don't I just do it this way it turned into six charts you could look at on your phone mm. ask questions ask why you're doing things mm. the second is creativity mm. Learn to tell better stories with data. If you just share statistics, people aren't going to resonate. If you yeah. can bring human element to it with creativity, it resonates. I love the arts and humanity for that because mm. they're fantastic at telling stories. Power them with data literacy and I couldn't yes, agree more. This is a this is a topic people often don't associate with, with yeah. data. And I think it's so vital. Absolutely. Yeah. I see and I tell this to people all the time. You know, I mentor people in at university in data science and they're like, what should I take or mm. what should I be doing? You, the, the courses will be laid out for you for your study, fill the mm. study. If you choose to study data science, the university will set that mm. up. Go take your, your elective courses Absolutely. on arts, mm. history, mm. literature, mm. learn to be creative. And then Absolutely. the final one, and it's one that you talked about earlier today and that you like to, it's critical thinking. Mm. We, with social media and the way things happen so quickly in our day and age, you don't necessarily have to critically think, it's given mm. to you. That's a big problem. Mm -hmm. We need to critically think on everything. So, and they all work together, right? Curiosity, creativity, and critical thinking. Mm -hmm. If you're curious, asking questions, mm -hmm. that's critical thinking. If you're creative, you communicate. I mean, it's, that's where you start. And then over time, yeah, if you want to learn more statistics, do it. Mm -hmm. If you want to learn more coding, do it. Yeah. But do those three things, and you're well on your way to being what you need to be with data literacy. Great. I couldn't agree more. Absolutely. Thank you Thank very you. much, Jordan. Thank you.